Now, since 1995, the annual design in Daba has drawn an audience from all over the world of the most amazing creatives working across advertising, fashion design, and marketing. They come together, they come together to hear about innovation, celebrate innovation and creativity. Now, this year was no different. Three days in Cape Town at a conference, understanding what creativity can do for the world. And next well, it's our fashion editor was there to capture all the action. Design in Daba. 2019, this is the one destination you have to be if you're a budding creative. From fashion to architecture to design, it has it all. We're giving you a trend preview for 2019. Let's go. Now listen, Tempo, Design in Daba, it's popping off. This is where trends are made. Tell me, what are some of the big trends in architecture we can look forward to in 2019? I think a very clear theme that's sort of emerged from Design in Daba is sort of coming back to our roots and as Africans and how we design. I think the idea overall co uh, collection is probably one of the major sort of representations of that and how we can embrace local materials and design that is born and bred on the continent and create world-class designs that are as good or even better than anything you can get anywhere in the world. I like that saying world-class. Where does South Africa, in your opinion, currently sit in the world of international architecture and, and how do we maintain competitive edge but still retain a South Africanness or an Africanness? I think South Africa is a bit confused. I think South Africa has always wanted to see itself as a world player. But I think sometimes it forgets its own roots and in trying so hard to be an internationally recognized architectural space, you forget that we are Africans and that we are in Africa. And so there are certain materials that you only really find in the Cape. And we, if we embrace those materials and those are the materials that we use and build out of, then they become unmistakably Cape or unmistakably state or Johannesburg, but we're just genuinely South Africa. And I think if that's sort of the mentality, it will become less about the aesthetic because the aesthetic will, be, will become inherent, right. right, through the use of those materials. Design in Daba sets the standard for creative innovation in Africa, and with an ethos of a better world through creativity, renowned Kenyan film director Wanaru Kahu helped set the tone. What's it like to come down to South Africa and, and showcase a project that's so close to your heart? I think it's just my biggest joy is being able to share Rafiki with an African audience because the film is banned in Kenya. So I feel that the more audiences, especially African audiences, that can see it across the continent, just, it, it really gives me such hope and such joy. So being here with this project and speaking on this stage about joy has been a joy, has yeah. been absolutely fabulous. I can imagine. What is it about the film specifically that creates that sort of hostility or antagonism in, in your home country? Well, I think because the story is a story about same-sex love, there are current laws on the table that, that criminalize homosexuality. So that, I think, is the biggest problem. So the ability to be able to show a story about love should not be a problem. And that's why we're currently in court uh, pushing for freedom of expression. Next was arguably the most lauded advertiser in the world, David Droga, a man who has twice been named one of the top 100 most influential leaders in marketing, media, and technology. David, you're one of the keynote speakers here at Design and Daba. Give us a bit of a preview into the presentation you're about to give. Advertising is a trillion dollar industry, and to most people, it's a burden or pollution. My side of the equation, I think advertising can be spectacular and add value when it's done well. So that's why the title of my uh, speech is called From Fireworks to Lighthouses. You know, sometimes it can, I want to do work that's entertaining and, and, and magnificent like fireworks, or I want to do work that is helpful and adds value, like uh, lighthouses. Everybody is in advertising, essentially, even those people that don't realise it. Anyone that has an Instagram account runs an advertising agency. Yeah. You know, and I feel like with great power of the industry, it, it, it's, uh, it's an amazing opportunity. What are some trends or, or some realities you think will be occurring in the next five to 10 years that some people might not really realize or be aware of? I feel like it's being, obviously, work is down, now being much more targeted. You know what I mean? And there's two ways to look at that. There's either targeted because it's actually trying to add value, or hopefully there's less of this, but it is happening. More stealth stuff, which is trying to pretend it's not advertising, pretend it's not marketing. And that's the stuff that I find a bit dodgy. I've been a lot, around a lot of South African designers, and let me tell you, your pieces are next level. Thank you, thank you so much. Honestly, thank you. and it's an aesthetic entirely your own, but talk about your influences. Where do, where do the bio influences come from? So my influences and for the brand Orange Culture is really just about how I grew up and what I grew up around. Um, I'm very much influenced by stereotypes and pushback, so 
growing up being sort of a different representation of what I felt a man was. Mm. And how your piece is received in a place like Nigeria, I mean, I, I would imagine I mean, it's still quite a patriarchal, mm. more of an emasculating mm. culture as we find in a lot of countries around the world. So how have you been received at home? People saying, oh, this is how you need to be, this is the way men are supposed to be, this is how men are supposed to dress, sound, whatever the case was. Mm. And for me, that was a stereotype that I felt needed to be challenged. And so when I started the brand, I used the brand as an opposition for what I felt was a problem and not just a stereotype that needed to exist. So I used the brand then to push for impact, mm. not just create clothing, but to push for impact and to challenge things that exist that I feel should not exist and ask those questions, why do they really exist? If you had to sort of forecast, where are we going in terms of African fashion? Mm. What tidbits can you give our mm. viewers? I think um, in terms of African fashion, we're going to a place now where we're about individual expression and so designers are finding their own voice. So it's about self-tales and self-stories and self-expression and representation. Design in Daba 2019, proving that African talent across all mediums is a global force. The competition is rife, we can and do have a place at the International Creative table.